so you guys know that I've been those of you that that have been following me on Twitter on, on Instagram on YouTube you guys know very well that I've been living with a, a Mercedes-Benz C63S yeah I've been living with this car for almost a year now and then I took my time I took it because because there's there's so many short videos so many some kind of explanation videos where I was talking about it now I've decided to do that to give you guys a full review you know why because uh my c63s is the last of the v8 is the last of the rumbling v8 you will never ever see but i hate it's coming back yeah uh, haven't you any of you heard that the, the the v8 is coming back i think i read about it somewhere else but i'm gonna find out yeah i is coming in but right now as you speak you cannot buy a brand new c63s or v8 you cannot Right now, he's coming out with only uh, two liter four cylinder engines with more power because of those electric uh, motors. Okay, so I've decided to make a review for you, for you guys where I'm going to be detailing everything the car, the, the accelerations, the problems, uh, the difference between the C63 and the C63S, C63S because they're not the same. I, I thought before I started driving this car, I thought C63, C63S, the difference would be just the color of the exhaust because one is good black exhaust one has got silver there's a lot of difference in this in this car which i'm going to discuss in the video so you guys uh stay tuned uh like and subscribe and enjoy this video of the c63s This is the Mercedes-Benz AMG C63S. Yes, it's an S. If it was back in 2012 and, and, and below, this would be a, a Black Series. But Black Series are the thing of the past, except in the AMG GT, which the AMG GT has got something to do with this car, but you will find out as the video goes on. Let's go around and appreciate the last of the rumbling V8. Yes, guys, there's never gonna be another V8. But however, there's a speculation in the market, but we, have, we can't talk about it because we are not sure. We are just not sure if that was true or not. Yeah, this is the rear of the car. It looks good. It looks beautiful. Aggressive with those four pipes, although I prefer the silver ones because the silver ones are much more visible. But black is still okay. Look at it. So beautiful. The last of the V8. These cars now are starting to be a little bit more expensive because the auto world knows very well Lugori. They are no longer there anymore. So therefore, if, if, you, if you want to invest in a car, you buy this now, you keep it clean and well, you maintain it, you service it, you don't abuse it, it will make you money in the future. Look at it. I've heard a couple of people, actually many people asking me, what is the difference between the C63S and the normal C63? Well, in our market South Africa, we've got too many of the C63S. I don't even think we got the C63. If we did, you'll let me know. But otherwise, this C63S differs with the C6, normal C63 in the following way. The C63S has got 1075 kilowatts, which is 403 horsepower and 701 newton meters of torque. While the normal C63 got 344 kilowatts, which is 469 horsepower and 640 49 newton meters another interesting difference remember the body shape of the car is all the same everything is all the same by just looking at the car except the small details in the interior on the seat design and the car and stuff like that the c63s gets a dynamic traction control system that was updated uh, adopted from the amg gt yes it get it from the amg gt and also the c63s get a, a launch control meanwhile the normal 63 it doesn't have the launch control uh, the C63S has a race mode, while the normal C63 has just got a Sports Plus. The C63S got a dynamic engine mount, while the normal C63 don't. And finally, the most important thing is the, uh, the steering wheel. Both of them are leather and Alcantara. This is how the C63 looks in the front, very aggressive. Uh, the new one didn't really go that much different from the previous one, as you can see. This is the picture of the new one, and this is the uh, my one. You see the difference is not that much. And I like that people are getting the AMG GT grill on, the, on this one that you're looking at right now here. Now, 
now let's check the interior guys y'all know I, I love hyundai but when it comes to the interior of the car mercedes-benz has always taken a trophy just look at it they have always taken a trophy what whatever they do minimalistic design complicated design everything just looks perfect look it's a sedan but three people have got a display and also they've got a convent just look at it look at it high performance sedan with a sunroof yeah and then this is the how the car looks from the back the rear of the car like i said this exhaust are dark and black so from a distance you can't see them i would have loved these exhaust tips to be uh to be what to be silver the exhaust are the only thing i hate about the c63 those four they're they're just they enjoy because they are there but they're not really the real one you know they're just <laughs> i don't know why they did this huh eh? I mean, look at Hyundai Tucson. Their real exhaust are real visible. You can see them. But with AMG, no. There might be two at the back there, but there's one inside only. <laughs> well, yeah, it is what it is, and then we're not gonna change it. But otherwise, uh, this is a beast, man. I've been living with this car for quite some time right now, and believe me, the only problem is the exhaust part and the petrol consumption, obviously. And then this car is boring when you're driving it in a normal mode. I normal mode when you're traveling to vendor, yes. But in Jay, if you are enjoying, if you want to enjoy this V8 by table, you've got to do it in the Sport Plus or a race mode. But then again, if it's on Sport Plus, you have to know what you're doing because, hey, you're going to end up on the other side of the wall. Believe me. This car is aggressive. It's, it is performs. The, the 4 liter V8 does not play. The 503 horsepower, they will really show you that this 503 horsepower. You know, the, the headlights are still relevant even today, even though this is the old model yeah you know and then also one thing that i have to tell you about this car the ownership of this car right now it's a bit okay but don't mind my bread over there but because they no longer uh, make the v8 this might go up in prices right now you can get them between uh 600,000 to 800,000 you know if you are liking and those ones that were that were never driven are going actually for around about 900,000 i've seen one for over a million This is not a video where I will tell you about the cup holders and the and the USB ports and what now. It's a C63. It's got everything. It's got the, the others as well. It's there. It's got everything else. All I wanted you to you guys to know is the uh, the, the living experience with this car. I've been living with this car for quite some time right now. And then believe me, I don't regret it. But here's the question: Will I stay with this car permanently? Isn't buying it and then no no i'm still a boy fan of ford mustang yeah if i'm given a million and they say choose to buy between a mustang or a c63 i would definitely choose mustang anytime anytime the 5.2 liter v8 on the mustang delivers better than this one you know although i met a mustang guy the other day at the garage and then i proposed the race and then he refused i don't know why he thought i was gonna beat him most for, i don't know but anyway yeah yeah we just spoke about cars and stuff like that he, he actually knows a, a lot about cars and then he used to drive the coupe one the c63 coupe but then he moved to mustang and then he does not regret it that's why lena i would definitely with my money go and buy uh, the ford mustang but I'm not taking anything away from the C63S because it's a perfect car. It's the best car. Obviously, I can't expect it to be fuel economic because it's a high performance sedan. So whatever that is doing to me and my pocket, I saw it coming. I expected it. So I'm okay with it. I said I will tell you the problems that I've experienced with this car since I started living with it. Well, the first problem is not a problem. It's what is expected is the fuel consumption that's the first problem which is not a problem and then the second problem that i got um uh is the undercover of the car you see the front splitter the the cover under the front splitter it got out one day it got out while i was uh, speeding you know when you do vrpa you're doing zero to hundred and two seconds and three seconds four seconds yeah somehow i think it got loose then it got out then it got scratched on the floor but otherwise only that yeah, that's the problem that I found living with this car. Oh yeah, also and also the the noise from the 
for, I don't know whether if it's an aircon or the fan, the noise, uh, it, it was making too much noise. And also at some point, the aircon wasn't working because it was blowing hot air only. Just like hot air only, whether you take it to cold or whatever, it was hot air only. Then it was fixed and then it was very much expensive to fix it. Mm, yeah. Otherwise, there wasn't any other mechanical problem that I experienced with this car except the petrol, the undercover that got out, uh, the noise, uh, the echo noise, and the hot air only problem. Yeah, that's it.